These woods are an example of what can be accomplished without man's interference. This forest, away from any town or communal society, is as untouched by man as any mass of green can be. It would be easy to mistake an area like this as a place of solitude and silence. That is not the truth. Here, there is no substantial evidence of civilization, but that does not mean it is without life. Wind and water fill the amphitheater with motion and meaning. Endless chatter of woodland beings permeates within this arborous cathedral. These are not idle conversations. It is an opera, a symphony, a concerto of unification, perfectly executed by design. There is no explanation for how these beings coexist. There is no reason to know why. Within these trees, among these streams, life is, and that is good enough. Nature is not entirely benevolent, and yet this does not take away from its beauty. Animals are hunted and eaten alive, with no knowing of anything outside of this forsaken wood. Human life is very much the same. Every day is lived knowing that any moment could be your last. But it is assumed that now is not that moment. Today is not that day. There is a desire to strive for significance. But in the end, every day ends just the same. These vicious beings live doing what they must do to survive, even if it means the end of another creature's life. Does this make them any different than the small rodent? burrowing its home within the confines of a tree to seek shelter from the outside world? Even something as beautiful as a flower can be subjected to draining the essence of other greenery to stand a little bit taller and glow a little bit brighter. There is a cruelty in nature that brings about destruction. And yet, this forest still stands. Life carries on, even if it's not the life that came before. At the heart of the forest lies a massive, ever-reaching oak, as large as a hill upon a mountain. Standing alone and apart from the rest of the forest, encircled by still water, the trunk of the behemoth is impossibly thick, able to withstand the elements for the centuries it has stood here. The stoic branches do not sway like the other trees within the wind. Night is everlasting beneath the countless branches. No light permeates the endless leaves. There is one thing that this beast of a structure exacts more than any other being on this planet. It endures. It endures the frost of the winter, the storms of the spring, the scorch of the summer, and the collapse of autumn. 
It endures the loneliness from being different and unyielding. The tree grows taller and stronger with each year, but never closer to the others that surround it. The other trees live, and they will surely die. But this monolith remains to stand the test of time. Streams cut into the wooded area like capillaries, carrying the essence of life from the top of the hills to all the organs of the forest. The streams swiftly scour the mountainside to ensure the continuation of this Eden, ceaselessly palpitating the blood of the earth. Unlike a standard circulatory system, the cycle of this network of vitality does not return to its source. It only travels downward into the endless expanse of the sea to nevertheless return as droplets in the rain. Following the streams is a sure way to reach the colossal peak if one were not to worry about the definitiveness of gravity. There is only one way to reach that height so directly, and it requires wings. Without a transport of such convenience, one must move onward into the dense arteries of the mountain, where the sun is no longer your companion, and the loneliness truly sets in. The dark takes over, and there is nowhere else but forward. There is no more going back.
Darkness overtakes those who enter this realm of wet and stone. Turning back leads to another kind of blindness that only incepts at the great divide of light and the abyss. It is better to become accustomed to the dark on our journey within. The only way to reach the highest peak is to descend into the deepest parts of ourself, far within the mountain. The life of the outside world does not go where we must dread. There is no reason for creatures without a conscience to join in on this quest of introspection. The light is quickly fading, giving us a sign to carry on. For now, this is the only option, the only one there's ever been. This seemingly vacant corridor within the chasm consists of a series of interconnected tunnels. Winding inward and outward, there is no telling where one path stops and another begins. But we must choose regardless. There is a strange familiarity about this darkness, as if you have been here once before. But that is not the case. You have always been here. You have never left this darkness. Not for many years. The abyss has become a companion and reminder of the warped life you lead. Not everything is the way it should be. But it still is all the same. The silence of the deep has now been broken. What once was a faint drip has now become a bellowing beat of a heart of stone, distilling the essence of life before sending it throughout the tumultuous cavern. The pounding echoes within your mind until there is nothing left but the sound and the feeling of undeniable existence pushing forth. It has been ages since someone met with the pulsating rock. The visions granted by this enchanting boulder bears witness to your own faults. These jaded memories are not left forgotten and are carved into the walls to stand the test of time. The darkness is shattered at the realization that you are no longer alone. Nature's light sources fill the void like tiny bonfires, providing warmth and safety from the dark. Humming and buzzing, these light-filled guardians illuminate the darkness to reveal that there was another beside you all along. Every step closer brings you one pace further away from this cordial being. But who could it be? In this eternal landscape of dark, only shown through the kindness of the torch-bound insects, with a shape so recognizable and so familiar, there is no mistaking the importance of a being such as this. But you do not know.
A stark beam sits ever so strongly in the distance. Could this be the final terminal before taking off into the sun? The ever-longing vent that exceeds this darkness, that brings light into the memory so willing to fade. No, this is not the end. Not here. There is still more to witness. Fill your mind with luminosity. Steal your soul with what was taken by the abyss. Hold on to your dream and evoke the past. For remembering is all that is left for a being so broken and afraid of what is yet to come. Emerging from the depths of remembrance, a new serenity seeps forth into vision. Glistening in the distance, the overbearing copper orb begins to set its wavering mind. We are closer now than ever before to the persevering peak, a place where we too will find our home to dream. A restful sleep is the ultimate reward for those embroidered in tumultuous turmoil. At least for this moment, there is nothing left but to close the lying eyes and open the wandering wisdom of uninterrupted thought. At this moment of utter twilight, the veil of truth and falsity relinquishes its nature of the opaque. so distant geography, 
The source of the mountain streams fulfills a vast pool of hopes and dreams. Lotus petal along the outskirts of the seams, dancing and pooling all together, making their leave one after another in an endless cavalcade of organic staccato. Memories of the truth contort into beautification of reality. To many, what once was is not life's faithful occurrence due to whatever conventions of one's conviction. These trusted falsifications establish a history, both honest and maligned, but whichever of these creates the further benefit will stand the test of time. Can it be that actuality can be erased through the complexity of memory? A second sighting of the familiar phantom brings peace to my frantically fleeting soul. Drawing water from the acquiring aquifer is none other than the rehabilitating reason for this vigorous venture. Her beauty reflects perfectly in the hopeful spring. The lotus flowers tell tales of majesty all to her touch. Petals may fall from the flowers they form, but their freedom fastens onto my fleeting and faltering feelings. A living touch only surpasses her loving look, something more easily dreamt in a world no longer to be attained. only begun its arc into descendants. Before the night sets in, memories regain momentum, dreams and their happenings fade into existence. Love and loss are among the most famous feelings in the moments of increasing dusk. There is still a sweetness to be felt. Light is still prevailing. For now, only somber moments take the stage. There is no stopping the prominence of these emotions. In the same way, there is no impeding the beginning of a new day. But in the sunlight, however faint, there is still time to make a change. A difference to keep the night from overlapping the glory of the nearest star. Accept that the feelings of loss and loneliness exist to promote the endearing experience gathered from fate's finer finishes. To lose something is to lose a piece of oneself. No matter the prominence, regardless of the moment, pieces of persona are left behind. And like the endearing oak, 
One must persevere the current that life forces us all into. The gifts given unto us are stolen without repair. But in the end, they are gifts and only alive for a fleeting time. Like everything else in this world, the endless river of time flows into the ocean of eternity. All things are caught in the tide of time, and it makes no difference. We alone are mere droplets, countless fragments, but together we circulate humanity's cycle of joy, pain, gain, and loss. What a journey this has been, to venture here to reach the highest peak at the end of the world. There is a softness to the ground here unfelt in neither the wood or the stone. The greenery that grows here is different near the lake. Everything upon this hill glows with such a sheen unseen by those unwilling or unable to take upon this quest of internal ascension. The fading light shimmers on the landscape as the sun glistens on the undersea wonders of this world, wavering in and out with the wind and the leaves. Breathing is heavy at first, before the night's ocean overtakes one's vision and envelops the sky with something new. The day will soon be refreshed, but there is still much more to do before the dawn of the final day.
The finality of existence is among the highest truths reaching back to the conception of creation. Nothing lasts forever, regardless of the implications granted by the numerous promises made in one's lifetime. Love brings loneliness. Joy carries pain. Life leads to death. Everything ends. To dream of everlasting is futile. What is left behind will eventually be forgotten. There is no avoiding these words. The clock's hands continue to strike each hour without failure, its face unnerved, tirelessly turning the circumference of infinity. Every stroke signals the edge of one universe and the genesis of another. Will the gears that turn over time ever cease? What will happen then to this world? Will it stop, or shall it find continuation without the need of its keeper? At this peak, above all created by man and its superior, feelings of forfeiture force deeper than any wounded heart can bear. It is here where the troubled soul will at last find peace from the bombardment of huddled empathy. There is nothing that can be said to ease the pain of brokenness. Two rings join together to become eternity, and still this is not enough. Total transcendence requires more than a promise, metal, and a seal. More than love. One must relinquish themselves completely and give only to the other. But any lack of strength will cause the union to shatter, regardless of sickness or health. Maybe I was wrong to believe that there was nothing else waiting on the other side of the veil. Perhaps my sight became riddled with self-doubt and the fear of beginning again. I could never forget. To forget her would be a crime with no just punishment, not even after death. Surely there is nothing more foul to have forsaken an ideal so pure. The hollowed words of matrimony do mention the inevitability of separation. But regardless of my words of the past, my speaking during this journey, I never gave up hope. The hope to see her again someday. As I traveled the vacant Gaia, I searched to hear her voice, seeking the answer to why. Why did we not deserve the jubilations we dreamed during our youth?
the orbs of light from the depths of the mountain join me once more, flickering a path towards the summit, to the Alpha and the Omega of all things. For what exists now fell from the sky as rain, and there I shall return by the flickering flame of the night's messengers. I am no longer alone. I have reached the end of our journey here together. But wait. What is this at the top of the mountain? This familiar form that has been forever etched into my mind. The roaring winds and the rising torches make evident it is she. The one whom I have been seeking. The only reason I have left to continue onward. Has she been waiting here for me? No. No, that is not the case. She has always been with me. There were two steps for everyone taken on this journey. Rene, I have finally found you. And here we are, at the beginning of all things, and at the end of this history's tomorrows. Love always was, and always will be the guiding light that brings you home, no matter the distance, whether it be across the world, throughout time, or transcending existence, love will find a way. You will never be alone, my dearest Renee. I wish I could leave you with more solace than this, but know that what we have will never truly end. No matter how dark the world may seem, no matter the paths your life takes you, even if you find another, know that this will be all right. I want you to be happy forever. You have given me more than I could ever ask for, my darling. A life filled with joyous perfection. Know this for now and for always. I will always love you. These woods are an example of what can be accomplished without man's interference. This forest, away from any town or communal society, is as untouched by man as any mass of green can be. Within these trees, among these streams, life is. And that is good enough.